morning. Welcome to The Daily Race. Today we're talking about humility and unity and how those two things have to go together. You can't have unity without humility. Man, so glad to uh, start this Sunday morning with you. Man, yesterday was awesome. Yesterday was awesome. Got a chance to go over to the Wishbone Festival out of the Buckeye campus and man, they did an incredible job. Uh, so many volunteers, uh, so much work done there. Just created incredible atmosphere for the community out there. I know my daughter Grace uh, was walking around, saw some one of her friends from school that had been invited. So uh, the word was was out. Uh, there were people inviting people. What a great way to demonstrate God's love! And just the way they did the food distribution was amazing. Just a personal touch on that as well. Um, hey, we we can distribute things efficiently, but we want to make a connection. We want people to know that we love them, that we care about them. And uh, the Buckeye team did an incredible job yesterday doing that. Well, hey, we are in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're talking about unity in the body of Christ. And that's that's what I love about our church. We are one church, multiple locations. Uh, unity is so important in any local church uh, in the entire body of Christ. Paul speaks about it here. And as he kicks it off, his discussion on unity, he tells us what the most important element is. And it starts here in chapter 4, verse 1. It says this, Therefore, I, as a prisoner serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, Binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. He is calling them to unity. Why? Because God is one. There's only one body, one body of Christ. We talk about our, our local church bodies. We talk about our church being our local church being the body of Christ. And that's not incorrect, uh, but it is part of the entire body. Jesus only has one body. Um, there is one body of Christ, and we need to be united in it. Just as there is only one faith, one spirit, we've been called to that. So unity is so important. It starts It starts in our families. It starts in our church family. And then our church families unite into the entire body of Christ. And he starts off here by saying, humility. Always be humble and gentle. Why? Well, because you can't have unity with the opposite of these things. L let me just read this in its opposites. Always be prideful and coarse. Be impatient with each other's. Hold grudges against every fault that someone has against you. Now, if you did all of those things, would there be unity in that relationship? If you were always prideful and coarse, if you were impatient and held all counts against each other, held grudges? Of course not. That's the opposite of, you know, those are all dividing points. Humility, gentleness, patience, forgiving one another, those are all the elements necessary for unity. That we need to put, live out those attributes and we will be one. Now this oneness doesn't mean sameness though. That's where Paul takes us. He says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, in all, and through all. However, he has given each of us spe a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That's why the scriptures say when he ascended to the heights, he, held, he led the crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. And then he says this, Now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come into such unity and our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So, so unity is not sameness, just like a body is not all the same parts. It's not just some 
gelatinous one material that makes up our bodies. There, there's all different types of materials. There's all different types of functions. There's all different types of, of body parts and systems inside and out that contribute to it. Yet, it is one. I have one body that functions together in unity. That's the picture that Paul is painting here for the church. But the key, the key is to start with humility. As soon as one thing, one body part thinks that they're more important than the rest, as soon as one person thinks they're greater than the rest, uh, that puts their needs above others, that breaks down the unity. We realize that we're independent, interdependent. Uh, we realize that every single part is important. Humility isn't to say that we're less than, isn't to, to dismiss our gifting. It's to acknowledge our gifting, but recognize its place among all. That it's not more important than others, it's just as important. And this word humility actually didn't, wasn't used before the New Testament times. Uh, this is a word that came up during these times. It's used throughout scripture. Before, and even as this word started being used, uh, uh, Greek philosophers, Roman philosophers, uh, put this as a list of things that were, were bad, that you shouldn't be humble. Once again, what does Paul say? Do not conform to the customs of this world. That all the world is saying humility is bad, that you have to fight your way to the top, you have to claw your way to the top, that strength, uh, that, that uh, you know, overcoming others is how you, you move ahead in life. Paul said, no, it's exactly the opposite. It's humility. Why? Because Jesus. Jesus humbled himself and took on the form of man. We follow his example. The first will be last and the last will be first. And there's so many different things, so many different directions we could go with this, but the same thing is said over and over and over again in the words of the apostles and the words of Jesus himself, the overarching themes of the gospel message, humility. Humility is necessary for unity to be present. All right, let's, let's, let's pause there for today. We're going to continue on on Paul's discussion on unity tomorrow. Uh, but we're going to get ready for our day. We got church going on today. Good year, Buckeye. So excited for that. And today, we're going to be praying for, um, I know yesterday is, is typically the day that we pray for our outside church partners, but we had some, some big things going on with the um, uh, Wishbone Festival I want to pray for. But I want to bring up a, a pastor friend of mine, Pastor Travis Hearn from Impact Church over in Scottsdale area. This last week, he had a major stroke. Um, was in the hospital, um, very serious. He's, he's doing better. I, I've gotten word from some of his staff members and things like that. But let's, let's lift him up today and the entire Impact Church family. Uh, just as he heals, as he recovers, it's, it's going to be a, a, a long road there till he, he, he's fully recovered. Um, but God has done some amazing things over there. Put them in a new facility over these last couple of years. They're growing like crazy. They're, they're making an, an impact at Impact Church. So let's pray for them and their team as they are, are navigating this weekend uh, without Pastor Travis there present with them physically, uh, but we know that his leadership is is, is incredible and so making an impact there for, for years. So let's lift him up today as we get ready to gather together as a church. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much just for your goodness. We thank you so much just for um, the way that you've shown us what humility looks like. God, you don't just tell us to be humo humor humble. God, you demonstrate it through your son. So as we walk throughout this week, may, may we just be aware aware of the ways that our pride, uh, that our self-centeredness breaks down relationships, uh, causes divides, whether that's in our, in, our, in our marriages, in our family relationships, God, in our work relationships, in our church relationships. God, help us to be hypersensitive to that. And, and when the Holy Spirit makes us aware, God, may we turn to humility. Uh, may we model you. God, we pray for Impact Church this morning. God, specifically, we pray for Pastor Travis, God, we pray for his recovery. We pray that you would just continue to heal him, to, to help him to get, uh, get back uh, into doing what he loves to do, serve you uh, through being a, a pastor of a church. God, I just pray that you would just help their team today as they are uh, filling holes and, and, and stepping in and, and taking care of things. God, we just, we just thank you so much that uh, you have created such an incredible team over there at Impact Church. Just encourage them today and God, let them know that we are praying for them and that we love them as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.